Hello everyone. It's uh, your friendly Ellen the Baker Chick. You know, I've been doing some thinking and I thought, you know, I haven't really done a beginner, beginner, beginner basic video of how to use your machine, maybe the first time or a little bit after, maybe second, third time. And I haven't ever made a basic white bread for you because I, it's not really something we eat. And I haven't showed you how to actually make a bread in the bread machine and exactly how everything works. So instead of stepping forward, a step back just a little bit. And I wanna talk about the very first time or second time you use your bread machine. Now, I only have one kind. I have three Zojirushi Virtuoso Plus machines. If your bread machine works differently, obviously, you will have to follow the directions for your bread machine. But a lot of you, a lot of you I know have this machine. And so I hope this will be helpful, especially if you just ordered it and you're one of those people who it's sitting there in the box, but you're intimidated and you're afraid to take it out. <laughs> so I'm going to help you with the easiest, simplest recipe, although all recipes are really not that different from each other, just some different ingredients. So I'm gonna show you from the very, very beginning. I can't unbox it because I don't have the box anymore, but other than that, I'm gonna show you from the beginning. So this is the Zovi Plus, as we call it, to cut down on syllables. And this is the bread pan with the paddles inside. I'm gonna pop it out close the lid just for now so it's not in the way of the video and I'm going to bring the bread pan over here now the bread pan has the two paddles already in it because when I wash my bread pan I dry it immediately and I put the paddles in it immediately do you know why well because some people wash their bread pan and wash their paddles and leave them to dry and they go and they take their bread pan and they start making a new bread and then they wonder why it's not mixing and it's because they did not put the paddles back in. Almost everybody who uses a bread machine that I know from all of the Facebook groups have done this. I've done it. I only did it once. <laughs> but um, I've heard of people putting these down the disposal. They get in the trash because they weren't careful. So please, 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 after your bread is done, when you wash your bread machine, dry this bread pan right away and get your paddles back in. You will thank me. All right, so speaking of paddles, I'd like to show you how to put them in. Just in case you haven't used your machine before. I hope my fingers won't be too much in the way. How I do it is there, well, there's like a round and a straight with a little notch. Same thing on both sides. I don't know if you can see it. Um, the paddle is, looks like round on both sides, but it fits a certain way. So what I do, sometimes it just goes right in if I hit it just right, which is unusual, but usually I don't. And it sits up like that and I just go give it a flick. And that's all I do. If it goes in the first time, it's kind of a miracle. So I'm gonna stick that back in, watch again, give it a flick. Just spin it and it drops into place. You should not have to push down. There's nothing to push, okay? And if I try to pick it up, I mean, I could wiggle jiggle it out, but if you pull, well, say I did it again, oh, that's twice in one day, that's pretty funny. But if I have it in not straight, if I try to pick it up like that, it may or may not come out depending on if I've turned it or not. Okay, now, there is a myth floating around that you are supposed to align your paddles. Like that, or possibly like that. That is, completely 100% untrue. Now, 
if you do it and it works for you, by all means, enjoy yourself, do it. If you believe it works, then it works for you and that's fine. I knew for sure it couldn't be the case, but I wrote to Zojirushi. I have a copy of the letter if you want proof. I have it in a file. It makes no difference, okay? If you get a lopsided loaf, it's because either it's, you didn't have enough water or you had too much water or whatever. And sometimes the loaf is perfect, but it just comes out a little sloped. I thought I was doing something wrong. If you've had that happen, you thought you were doing something wrong. Sometimes it's just at the end of that second rise, it's just how it landed. Some people reshape it. I never did, I didn't really care most of the time. All right, so, so the paddles, you put them in however they land. You do not have to align them. As I said, if you want to, go for it. All right, so I am going to make what's in the Zoe V Plus recipe book as basic white bread. I think I better put on my apron because, you know, I will get flour all over my shirt. My Kona's anti-shirt Kona is my friend's dog. <laughs> and I love the dog, so she got me that. I help her take care of the dog sometimes. So I'm gonna put on my apron. The reason it says contains at least one nut, because, you know, me, nutty, but also because I'm allergic to nuts. My friend got me this apron and it's kind of a joke. So the basic white bread recipe calls mm -hmm. for water, bread flour, sugar, dry milk, salt, unsalted butter, and rapid rise yeast. Same, so going, going uh, ingredient by ingredient. We are so lucky to have this machine because at the very beginning of the course, it has a rest period. On the older machines, they called it preheat. It is really still a preheat. I don't know why they changed it to rest. What it does is it ever so slightly heats the ingredients to the optimal temperature for the yeast to bloom, the bread to mix, and the bread to turn out properly. That means that you do not have to warm any of your liquids and you do not have to soften your butter. No matter what the recipe says, if it says lukewarm milk or lukewarm water, with this machine, you do not have to do that. And you also don't have to do that with the Home Bakery Supreme. I don't know about the other Zoes because I've only had those two. So I'm going to turn on my scale and I'm going to put, and I love these silicone measuring cups. They're made by OXO. You've heard of that brand probably if you're in the US. I like them because they're squishy. There's nothing wrong with the other kind. So you put an empty vessel on the, uh, actually I'm gonna do this one, the bigger one. You put an empty vessel on and then you click the tear button and that takes it to zero. The reason you have to hit the tear button to make it zero is you don't wanna weigh this. If I, if I didn't tear this, if I put it on like this, and I put the milk in now, or the water in now, it, you would be adding on 194 grams of something. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the correct weight. So you must put the empty cup or bowl or plate or whatever it is on first and hit tear. Okay, so we need 320 grams of water. Just turning on my tap using cold tap water. You don't want to use warm or hot. And now you know why I switched to the bigger cup. Getting closer. All right, half a gram extra is probably okay. If I wanted to, I could like stick a spoon in here and wow, I'm at 399.9. Put a drop back in. 
There we go, 320.1, see how close it is? It's to the 10th of the gram. So I'm going to now <coughs> pour that into the bottom of the machine. Our machine takes liquids first. Paddles are in, always double check that your paddles are there. Pour in your liquid, okay? The Zoe cookbook has the ingredients in the exact order you need them, so that makes it really easy. Now, if you're making a recipe from a different place, it may have the ingredients in a, in a different order, not necessarily liquids first. So you don't mess up, so I don't mess up anyway, because I'm not as organized sometimes. I actually rewrite the list of ingredients to put it in the order that my bread machine takes it. And here we go. So the next ingredient is bread flour and it is 553 grams. You can use any bowl, doesn't matter, any kind of vessel. I just like this lightweight plastic bowl. 553, by the way, I don't make any money from King Arthur, I promise. In fact, I pay them a lot of money because I use only their flour. King Arthur bread flour. I'm not saying you have to use this, but most of us bread making people swear by it, it's our favorite. No, I don't work for them. So let's see if I have enough. Will I have to refill it from the back? Oh, I think I'm gonna make it. Five forty-seven. <laughs> We're almost there. Oh my God, come on. All right, ooh, right on the nose. I'm flying today. Okay, when I put it in the bread pan, I kind of cover the water as best I can. I kind of go back and forth. All right. There's our flour. The next ingredient is 48 grams of sugar. So I'm gonna put this bowl on here, and what do I do? I hit tear. Tear just means zero it out. I think it's a French word, pretty sure. And probably not pronounced tear. Tear, maybe, I don't know. So what do they say, 48 grams. Closer. Wow, look at that, okay. All right, if you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that I have a, a routine that I like to follow. And it's only for my own sanity. I always put the flour all over and I always put the sugar on the right side. And I always put the salt, salt is, on the left side. That way, if the phone rings, if I have to use the restroom, if someone distracts me, I can look and see. Okay, I see the sugar. Did I put the salt in? Nope, it's not there. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to do the dry milk first. Um, this recipe calls for eight grams of the dry powdered milk. And I have it right here. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this, but first I will measure it. Oh, 
almost there. There we go. A little extra. Okay. All right. There is always a debate about, and I'm just going to mush that little, there we go. There's always a debate about the powdered milk. Some people have never used or heard of powdered milk before. Some people say, well, do I have to use it? Now, there are all kinds of options, and I hope I don't confuse you by this. The reason that a lot of the recipes call for the powdered milk is because they want to, the people might want to use the delay function, meaning to set the timer, like you do this at night, you put the ingredients in at night, you set a timer for it to be ready at seven in the morning so you have hot bread for breakfast. You cannot do that with regular milk because regular milk is perishable, it will spoil, so you need the powdered milk, okay? If you are making your recipe right now, you can still use the powdered milk, it won't hurt anything. You can leave it out entirely. This ingredient doesn't make a huge difference, but it does sort of make your bread a little, milk makes your bread a little richer in flavor, kind of a nicer texture. The other thing you can do, which is what I almost always do, is when I put, instead of using water, like the, the was a 320 grams of water. Instead of using water, I just use milk. I don't use non-fat milk because I don't usually keep it in the house. I prefer whole milk. I even sometimes use half and half. It doesn't matter. In fact, you can mess with the fat content in your bread a lot. I double the oil, I double the butter sometimes. You can always increase the fat content. So. If you just don't have powdered milk and don't want to buy it, you don't need to. If the recipe calls for 320 grams of water and then it calls for dry milk, just use 320 grams of milk or almost any liquid. You can play with the liquid. Some people use almond milk or oat milk or soy milk. You may have to experiment a little to see what works, but Liquid is liquid for the most part. And you definitely do not have to have this weird powdered milk stuff. It's not weird, but I rarely use it. I just had it in the house. So I wanted to do it for this recipe. I'm gonna kind of pour it on one side of the flour. So that's the liquid, the powdered milk. And the next ingredient is salt. Talked so long, the scale went off and my husband's hand got numb. All right, so we have 10 grams of salt. I always get too much salt in. There we go. I'm trying to put it in back in, but it doesn't work. Oh, I spilled it all over the counter, oh well. All right, I always put the salt on the left side. When I look in here, I can see that I have the sugar on the right and the salt on the left and that I'm not nervous. Okay, the next ingredient is unsalted butter. All right, here's another conversation. Unsalted butter. I make so many bread machine recipes that I keep both salted and unsalted butter in the house. Um, if it the recipe calls for unsalted butter, I use unsalted butter. If it just says butter, I use salted butter. That's how I grew up. Um, it's kind of a personal preference. There does need to be some salt in the mixture for to temper the sugar that's making the yeast bloom. It's a chemistry thing, right? It's chemistry. So I do have unsalted butter. Now, if all you have is salted butter and you wanna make this recipe, it's fine. Maybe leave out one little pinch like measure out your flour and then take out one little pinch. It's not going to be a super big deal. 35 grams of butter, which isn't very much. Let's see if I guessed anywhere near properly. Oh, pretty close, five grams off. That's not very much. <laughs> okay. 
little teeny more, a bit more. Oh my goodness, come on. All right, so, if you're putting in a whole big stick of butter, I do suggest cutting it up a bit. But if it's small like this, maybe only, I cut it up maybe that much. Um, you do not have to soften your butter in this wonderful machine because of that rest cycle. Remember I said how it warms the liquid? It also will warm or soften your butter just enough so that it mixes in properly. You'll see other recipes that say that you need to melt the butter or that you need to soften the butter. With our amazing machine, you do not. I never do. Straight out of the fridge. And I make all kinds of recipes and I've never had a problem. So I just put it alongside the long sides of the flour. My very, very last ingredient is my yeast. But before I put the yeast in, what I do is I take sometimes my finger, sometimes a knife I cut the butter with, the spoon, doesn't really matter. And I make a little, little well or dimple or whatever you want to call it. And I grab my yeast. I keep my yeast in the freezer. I use only SAF Instant Yeast. I don't get paid by this company. It's not an official promotion. I don't sell it. It's just my favorite yeast. And that's what's in here. And it says six grams. It says rapid rise yeast. I just use this. I don't change the measurement. I already forgot. Six grams, okay. So I've teared it out. All right, 6.1, good enough. That's only one tenth of a gram extra. It will not hurt it. And then I put the yeast right in that little center area. You never want the yeast to touch anything but the flour. Seeds that are dry are, are also not gonna hurt it, like when I make rye bread, but it's caraway seeds. All right, we are going to go and, and look at the recipe. This recipe is made on course number one. <clears throat> not number one on this just means the first recipe, but we want course number one, which is basic. So we're gonna go over to the bread machine I'm gonna open the lid, making my husband walk backwards. <laughs> and when you put this in, how to explain it. How I learned is there's a gray dot there and a gray dot there, there and there, right? I sort of aim these two things right here for those gray dots. That's kind of the guide I use. You put it in carefully and you kind of wiggle jiggle. And then when you get those two outcroppings or whatever you want to call them, you get it in there and then you go. And you, I kind of go like this and push down and make extra sure that it's seated properly. Time to plug it in. All right, and I need to go to course one. These are the course buttons. So I know I'm on course 11 already because I always use the dough cycle. So I'm gonna go down to number one. And then it says crust control and I have it on medium and I think I'm going to leave it on medium. And I'm going to press start and it'll say rest right there. That rest cycle will be about 25 or 30 minutes long. And then the machine will start going and it'll start mixing and kneading and that goes on for quite a while. After it finishes kneading, it will go on to rise. It will knock it down and then it'll go back to rise some more and then it'll bake it. And I will show you all along the way, all the things that happened. Um, I do want to talk about 
what I do is set a timer, like I'm gonna set one. Hey Siri, set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. That's about when the rest cycle will be over because I want to be in here about five minutes to seven minutes after it starts mixing. Because even though the machine is relatively set it and forget it, you do have to do one thing. You do have to watch it about five to seven minutes into kneading to make sure that the proper amount of liquid versus flour is correct. And I'm gonna show you what to look for. You don't want it too dry. If it's too dry, you need to put a little splash more of water. And if it's too wet, you need to put maybe a tablespoon or two of flour because it needs to make a smooth dough ball or your bread is not gonna come out correctly. I will show you that. I just realized that I forgot to tell you that I think the Zovi Plus is the first machine that gives you a time that'll be done. So this is not a countdown clock of three hours and 27 minutes. It will be done at 3.27 p.m. And the bread machine has an internal clock that when you plug it in, it has the right time. And when you switch to and from daylight savings, you have to reset it, but it's not a big deal, it's super easy. Um, when it has 30 minutes to go, that time will change to 30 minutes, then it'll do a 30 minute countdown. That's my dog, Lucy, say hi, Lucy. So my timer's going off. It's been 25 minutes, and sometime in the next five minutes or so, the, um, the kneading will commence. You may have noticed that I weighed the ingredients. The Zoe book is fabulous because it has both the weights and the measure. I know a lot of you think I've been measuring all my life using measuring cups and everything has always turned out just fine. And in baking cakes and cookies and pies and stuff like that, measuring is truly okay. Um, but I have converted or am in the process of converting all of my recipes, even my old cookies and cakes and pie recipes to grams because it's easier. It's so much easier. It uses way less dirty dishes and um, the flour count, especially the flour measurement is extremely, extremely more accurate when you weigh in grams as opposed to when you measure with a measuring cup. I have measured with a measuring cup and weighed, being really careful, making sure I fluffed my flour and everything else and met, weighed it and I've gotten three different measurements and it was all from the same measuring cup. So it's not very consistent. The most consistent way of measuring and the most accurate way of measuring is using a scale. I'm gonna turn the cam, well, I'm not gonna turn the camera around. I like the E-Tech City food scale. I get it on Amazon and it is like 16 bucks. It's not a big deal. In fact, I love it so much, I've bought an extra one that's sitting in the cupboard. Please, 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 if you are going to be making bread, get a food scale and get one that goes to the 10th of the gram. It's just way more accurate. So the bread machine has just started mixing and I know it's kind of hard to see. You can see a little bit. Um, the glare of the lights is not helping. Um, I'm gonna let this go for about five minutes and then I'm gonna check to see if it needs more liquid, more flour, or it is just right. In other words, it's a Goldilocks situation. <laughs> it's not the five minutes yet, um, but I just want to show you, this is only mixed for like a, a minute and it's already, you know, starting to come together, but I will, uh, I will, you know, get back to it in about five minutes to make sure of the proper hydration. Um, I just wanted you to see what it looks like in the very beginning. And by the way, when you open the lid, the machine stops. The bread machine makes lots and lots of sounds. First it was a clunkety clunky, now it's more of a buzzy kind of a sound, I guess you could say. Still uh, waiting for that five to seven minutes to check the dough, but we can look at it that way. Well, our dough ball, <laughs> 
I'm a little sorry to say it looks perfect. I was hoping that it would either be wet or <laughs> wet or dry. Um, yeah, it's absolutely perfect. So do you see how it's made a beautiful, smooth dough ball? Um, if it looked dry, it would be slightly crumbly. It wouldn't have come together in one clump. Um, and you would maybe add like a tablespoon of water, let it knead for a minute or two, and then check again, maybe add some more. If it was too wet, there you would see all kinds of dough like on here, like around the paddles, like puddling around. Also, if it was too wet, this would be very sticky. It is just tacky. Now, I will say that when I use a scale to measure, when I learn to use a scale, getting a nice smooth dough ball is almost never a problem. When I was using measuring cups, I had to adjust more water, more flour constantly. Also, humidity has a lot to do with um, things. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I was making a bread for my brother who was visiting from about an hour and a half, you know, where he lives a little ways away. And I wanted to make him a challah with craisins. And I'd made one just a couple days before and it was beautiful. This one gave me all kinds of trouble. And I realized it was because it was a rainy day and I should have added more flour because it was just too wet and sticky, but I wasn't paying attention. I didn't set a timer like I did this time. And uh, I didn't have a smooth dough. Also, the dough was a little wet. Um, so anyway, you have to pay attention. But if you weigh your ingredients and it's not particularly super cold or super humid, hu I can't talk, super humid or on the other hand, super dry, chances are you will get a beautiful dough ball like that. And I forget to show you in the window it says neat. Had to run in here fast. Do you hear that beep? And you see that flashing? It says add. We're not adding anything to this, but when you hear that beep, that's when you add things like chopped nuts, raisins, chocolate chips, seeds, anything like that. And it beeps like that for, I don't know, about a minute. <clears throat> if you know that you're gonna add something, I suggest that you have that ready to go right next to your bread machine. When you press the start button and know that it's going to happen about, I don't know, 40-ish, 35, 40 minutes. I usually set a timer for about 35 minutes so that I am just in the, in the vicinity of my kitchen and I can hear when it goes off. So this is when you would add anything like that. I know it doesn't look very different from before, but it has been completely kneaded. And now we are in rise. You see where it says rise right there. That number one is course one because that's basic, like for a white bread. So crust control, I set, I didn't set it because it was already on medium. Then the crust control button is right there. I kind of never use it, but anyway. Um, and that's the complete time, 328. Um, it is one o'clock almost in where I am, so it's gonna be a while longer. It takes about four hours from start to finish. The very top of the page for the white bread, sorry, I'm holding this and not doing very well. Um, you can see that it says, rest and knead is approximately 45 minutes. And then that big green bar, rise, and it has a couple of punch downs. And then, bake and then you can see that crust color crust control medium crust three hours 25 minutes anyway so that is if you want to know how long things take although i kind of wish they would put times on here <laughs> um I almost always use, or I do always use the dough course, which is course 11, like this is course one, but I use dough course 11. I prefer to shape my bread 
and top it with things and make cinnamon rolls and all that stuff. So um, I usually use dough. But this is for making the bread all the way in the bread machine. So this is just a little check-in. It's maybe 15, 20 minutes um, since the last time you looked. By the way, some people think you cannot open the lid. You can open the lid. Just don't leave it open for any major length of time. But you can see that this is already bigger because it is rising. Now it's knocking it down a little bit. Kind of in the middle of the rise, it knocks it down a couple times on this course. And then it will stop doing that and it will get back to rising. See, it looks a little bit smaller again. And now it's back to rise. Sorry for the glare. There we go, that's clearer. So uh, it's risen, oh, about 20, 25 minutes since the last time I checked in and now it's knocking it down one more time and then it'll go into the final rise. I'll show you what it looks like inside. There we go. I hesitate to talk about this a little bit for newbies, but I will tell you a couple things that people do during the final rise. Just before baking at the end of the final rise, they catch it before it starts baking and they take the dough out, remove the paddles, and then kind of shape the dough a little bit and put it back in. I have never done that, ever. Um, I don't care if it has a little slope to it. This bread is rising absolutely beautifully, but you can see that it does have a little bit higher on one side than the other. It doesn't hurt anything. The other reason that people might take the bread out and take the paddles out is because they don't want to have the two holes in the bottom of the bread. Now, it bugs some people, never bothered me um, because by the time you slice it, the holes are kind of insignificant, but this is totally up to you. When you get your machine and you've made a couple loaves, that may be a next step for you. You might want to like stopwatch to time each cycle and find out when the end of the first rise is, how far in, you know, hours and minutes in. And, and then, you know, if you want to take the dough out, reshape it. If you want to take the paddles out, you can do that. I don't do that, but I also don't normally bake in the machine. I use the dough cycle. That will be another, another uh, video, but in fact, all my videos, I've used the dough cycle. Um, basically, you set it for dough and you take it out and you shape it yourself, you let it rise, and you bake it in the oven. Um, but the bread machine does all the hard work. So I'll let, show you when it's baking. This is about 10 minutes later. You can see that it does have a little slope. Who cares? It's going to be delicious. Um, it's still rising. It's baking, it just started to bake. And it's 2.46 my time, so about 42 minutes. Or As you can like see, that. it still says bake, and it's four more minutes. So the next time I turn on this video, it'll be coming out. And there's the, I'm done, I'm done, beep. So I'm going to hit the cancel button right here. I'm gonna unplug the machine. And this is in the Zoe book. When the cycle is done, you always hit cancel and then unplug. I'm gonna lift up, oh my goodness, is that a pretty loaf of bread? So I'm putting on my oven mitts because obviously this is hot. And 
I'm going to pull it up. So you're gonna need, obviously need oven mitts and pull straight up like that. Videographer is gonna follow me around. So the first thing I do is just, I have a trivet ready. Or you could do it on your cooktop, I suppose. Either one. So I am going to attempt to turn this upside down and shaky, 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 and hopefully it'll pop out. If it doesn't, then I have this. Actually, I could do a preliminary little loosen. You don't want to use anything metal. Obviously, you don't want to scratch the non-stick inside of your pan, but it feels, it doesn't feel like it's going to stick. It's coming right away from the edges. I'm not having to do real, I didn't probably need to do this. All right, here we go. I haven't actually baked in the machine in probably, he's doing a drum roll in like three years. So what I do is I, I don't know if you can tell, but I turn my hands upside down so that when I do this, I can be gripping it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and then I just gently flip it over. How about that? <laughs> and it smells pretty good in here, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. So, pan. A little bread stuck to one of the paddles. Not a sin. No big deal. So, the next thing we're going to do right away, I'm going to take one bit off for a minute. I'm going to squirt just a couple drops of dish soap. Get my water a little bit warm. Fill it just so it's above the paddles. Now, notice I did not put it in my sink. I'll tell you why. Now I can take my mitts off, grab a dish towel. Sorry, I'm flop flying around. <laughs> so you never, ever, ever wanna get the bottom of that pan wet. I'm going to show you how to wash it and everything in a little while. You never want to get the bottom where the bolts are, the bolts that hold, that turn the paddles. You never ever want to get that wet. Um, I destroyed my first bread pan. The bearings froze because I got it wet. Don't ever put this in your sink because if you filled it with water by accident or someone else came along who didn't know, it would ruin your bread pan. Really, you only want to get the inside wet. And if you get a little bit on the outside here, that's okay, but never on the bottom. I'm gonna let this soak for just maybe three minutes. Then I'm going to attempt to wiggle jiggle the paddles out. You don't want to leave the paddles in any longer than you have to because the longer you leave them in, the harder it is to get them. Okay, be back in a second. So the bread pan has been soaking just maybe for like three or four minutes. And as soon as possible, I like to wiggle jiggle the paddles out. So I don't know how much you're going to be able to see because there's, there's suds, but I'm sticking my finger in there and I'm just going to, oh good, one is out. And actually I just put it back in to keep soaking and then, and come on, there we go. And the other one is out. And I know you can't see them in the, in the suds, but both paddles are out. So. I'm going to, I think I can wash it now. So I think my husband and I are gonna do a little half circle and trade places. <laughs> so, this is what's next. I have a special straw brush that I get in the holes of the paddle. And then I have my sponge with dish soap and I can also get my so I'm going to first grab the paddles and the bread over and I'm going to wash the outside and this and do this and this so you can, you know, get dough, your bread on the inside. I'm going to put these over here and now I'm going to wash the bread pan and this is the big deal so 
It's not so, it's not too hot to handle, by the way. What I do, oops, disposal for a second, sorry folks. Okay. So what I do is I hold it like this on the edge of the sink with one hand. I'm right-handed, so I have it on my left. Get some soap on there. And I just wash the bread pan. Notice that I'm really only washing the inside. Obviously, if you've got something on the outside, you can like wipe it off with a paper towel or something, but you don't want to run water even on the outside, intentionally at least. So then what I do is I spray it out. And I got a little water on my hand there. So I spray it out. And I know I'm not done rinsing. And I flip it over. And I spray it out the rest of the way. Rinse, rinsey, rinsey. Normally things don't stick. I don't see any bread in there or anything. Rinse the handles. I think I'm... Let me just make sure. Yep, it's just water. So what I'm going to do first is put it like this. And first thing I do is dry the outside. Now, first thing I do is, well, second thing I do, I inspect in here. If there's even so much as a drop of water, the first thing I do is get paper towel. Why paper towel? Because it's thinner and it fits in the crannies better. I absolutely make sure that this is dry. I don't see any drops of water in there. You never, ever, ever want to get water inside here if you can possibly help it. If there's a little drop when you're washing it, just get it dry, okay? So I dry the outside. Doesn't have to be bone dry. And then I just go like this and flip it. <laughs> That's my favorite part. I dry the inside and I don't dry it like every inch dry. And then I just, again, do the paddles, put it in and flick, put it in and flick. And the pan is all ready for the next use. I will say that I do not put this back in the bread machine for storage until a few hours later or even the next day to get the rest of the bread pan dry. I'll show you what it looks like sliced later. I usually let a loaf of bread cool for about two to three hours before slicing. But just so I could finish this up and get this online for you, I wanted to show you what the crumb looked like. So we just cut, you know, one slice. Well, actually the end and then one slice. You can see that it's perfect and soft and it'll be a delicious white bread. Newbies, newbies, newbies. I hope that this helps you in your bread machine baking endeavors. Um, please subscribe so you get new notifications of new YouTube videos on here. You can message me anytime on YouTube. YouTube, I respond really quickly. And if you'd like to message me through Facebook, that's actually a little easier and you can do that too. And I respond pretty much except when I'm sleeping or at the gym or where I can't respond. I'm checking my messages and responding. I'm always here to help you. So I hope this has been eye-opening for you. And I hope that if you haven't opened that bread machine that's sitting in a box or, or you know, that you haven't used in a few years, I hope this has been beneficial to you. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I wish you happy bread baking.